just traveling along that coastline, you can see and feel and hear this tremendous explosion of life. I mean, it's belugas, it's scoters, it's the shorebirds, the sea life, all the way up to polar bears, which we saw all along that coastline. It's amazing, when we are coming by north and south of the Seal River estuary, it just changes. All of a sudden, you see just incredible flocks of birds. You see more whales, you see more activity. And just from an hour or two boat ride up and down the coast, you can actually visually see where that estuary is starting and ending just based on the wildlife. If my grandparents were here, I would say, I love it. We are here now. We're often confronted by people making a case to protect places that are in trouble, but it's just as important, I think, to study places that are thriving, where there just is a tremendous abundance of life. If we have a healthy, vibrant ecosystem, to start with that as a baseline, rather than starting in a place that's in trouble. Research in Hudson Bay is a critical part of our understanding of the Arctic marine system. Hudson Bay has a very large population of marine mammals, and the sea ice is an integral part of that ecosystem. So when you think about how beluga whales move into Hudson Bay and how they make use of the estuaries on the west side of Hudson Bay, part of that process is dominated by how sea ice behaves in those areas. The ice cover is reducing very quickly, so we now have four weeks longer open water season than we had just 10 years ago. I'm working on Arctic marine mammals at the moment. I'm looking at beluga specifically and beluga movements and habitat use in Hudson Bay. This population of beluga, the western Hudson Bay population, is currently in healthy condition. But the idea of protecting something while it's in good shape is something that we should all be aiming for with any species. The west coast of Hudson Bay has got lots of mineral resources associated with it. There's lots of interest through the port of Churchill for moving product in and out of the port. And because of globalization and pressures for more resources, the development cycle in Hudson Bay, as with all the Arctic, is increasing very rapidly. We don't even have the, the basis to kind of understand what are the critical pieces of this habitat for them. So in order to find an answer to this, we've started the satellite tagging project whereby we can understand which parts of the Seal River estuary are the most important to them. Right now we have satellite tracking data from 2012. We have a basic distribution from six animals giving us an idea of how these belugas use this estuary and what parts of the estuary are the most important. We see them using that estuary like a sanctuary for resting, for molting, for calving, for avoiding predation. Beluga are a metaphor for a whole range of other species and they're one where there's obviously a great human interest and that's in part I think because they're accessible. They give us a way into these estuaries. What we're doing here is a strip transect survey. So basically we've created a boundary on the coast and we're counting whales, number of animals, what's in that pod for example, the juveniles, the adults, and what they're doing. This is a complex ecosystem and protecting that area isn't only about the ability to protect the space that beluga use. Belugas travel by communities across Nunavut and Nunavik, and those communities have a connection to them that's equally special. I first met Johnny last year when he worked with us on our tagging project. Johnny's from Alviet, which is the Inuit community geographically closest to these estuaries. It's a community that has a really strong link with these same beluga, and walking around there with him, we saw these incredible stone structures all around that place that are a reminder that people have been using that space for centuries. Here's the kayak stand right here. Drying it up? Yep. Ten rings. There's more up here. Another cache? Uh huh. All these are cash for caching meat. Then they supply for the whole winter. They drop all the meat or the muck in there and cover it with rocks so the bears or animals won't get to it. We've been hunting for centuries and it's still our livelihood today to get meat for our family. We use this land and want it protected from being used for something else like this is traditional ground for the Inuit.